my name's Deneen. I'm the communications team leader here at Sport Bay of Plenty, and we are about to go into another round of the two Manawa Fund. So I thought I'd catch up with Kelvin, our active young people team leader, who is heading up that fund, and just find out a little bit more about what the purpose of the fund is uh, and some great tips and tricks for potential applicants. So welcome, Kelvin. Hey, Deneen. How's it going? Good, good. So you've been uh, pretty right into this two Manawa Fund. Can you tell us a little bit more about the fund and what the purpose of it is? Yeah, sure thing. It's a, it's a Sport New Zealand fund. Um, it was introduced as part of the COVID relief package, and it's about um, trying to activate um, young people, so targeted at um, young people, and ultimately the fund is meant to provide um, it's pro meant to provide a, a breakdown of barriers that are preventing uh, young people that are missing out from physical activity experiences an opportunity to gain those experiences and increase those physical activity levels. Awesome. So the next round of the fund, I believe, is open from 4th of January 2021. Is that right? Yep, as well. It's going to be a, um, it's going to open in, on the 4th of January and um, and be a rolling fund from that point on. Fantastic. And what yep. funds are available in this next round? Can you give us a bit of a breakdown between the split? Yeah, sure thing. So we had a really, really successful um, major round that took place in the month of September. Um, actually, it may have been October, but um, the two the two new funds that are going to open are um, one is uh, what's called a play fund. So those are that that, that amount of money is um, exclusively um, for play related projects. Um, the other the other portion of the remaining funds are going to be um, distributed under a FAST fund um, setup where applicants can apply for up to $15,000 for their project. Um, and we will assess those projects every fortnight um, so the funds can be paid out quite quickly. Um, it's worth noting that the play projects can be can can be up to the value of $60,000. And they'll okay. be assessed every they'll be assessed every fortnight, much like the fast fund. Awesome. Mm. So we've got a fifteen thousand dollar fast fund and a sixty thousand dollar fund that's targeted specifically at play. Now play is increasingly becoming a thing, I guess, that's popping up in the sport and recreation or uh, regional sports trust kind of space. Uh, mm. What's that about? Like, why are this increasing focus on play? Yeah, sure. So um, Sport New Zealand have sort of acknowledged that um, in order to um, increase physical activity levels of, of young people and tamariki in, in particular, um, we want to promote free play and sort of self-guided physical activity, if you like. Um, so it's becoming an increased focus um, for, the, for the sector, I suppose, as an important um, physical activity experience for tamariki. Awesome. Now, I know um, this play fund, the, one of the key things that applicants will need to demonstrate is that, that they've captured the voice of the participant. What do we mean when we're talking about the voice of the participant? Can you give us some examples about, um, about what that actually is? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. So each applicant should, um, should actually be making an attempt to speak to the young people that they hope to activate. So those young people that are currently missing out on quality physical activity opportunities, uh, for whatever reason, ideally we want our applicants to actually um, speak to them. We want them to ask them things like, um, uh, "Why aren't you participating?" or "Why don't the current offerings appeal to you?" You know, what barriers are you facing? Um, and then, what activities would you like to do? And then, ultimately, as an applicant, you should look to provide those experiences to those young people. Um, so the best way to do that is to do focus groups with the young people. Um, you can record them on camera and send that in with your application. Um, you can take notes of what they say and take photo of a take a photo of a whiteboard or a butcher paper or just take notes in their language. Um, but it's really really important we are we are favouring and actually not many applicants in in round one or earlier rounds that didn't include voice of participant are actually not being. Um, almost not being considered because it's a key part of demonstrating the need for the project from those that each project hopes to target. Okay, fantastic. Mm. So really, I mean, what we're getting at here is making sure that whatever initiatives or projects that are delivered are really what young people in the Bay of Plenty want. Absolutely. It's awesome. absolutely imperative. No worries. Now, into some of the specifics, can existing projects be funded? Yeah, so this this, is, this has been a, a really big um, talking point. So existing projects can be funded, but they'll be funded on the basis that um, that an applicant should show how the Tumanua funding will 
activate um, participants that, are, that have not currently been accessing that opportunity. So as an applicant, if I'm running a particular competition or opportunity, I can't just apply for that opportunity um, and then cover some of my own expenses. I need to I need to show how that particular opportunity is is through the funding is going to open the access to to those that are not currently um, uh, that are not currently accessing it. So um, we've had some applicants apply apply to make the overall entry of their opportunity cheaper. So you can't make the overall opportunity cheaper, but you could pick target groups of young people and subsidize their entry fee or pay for their travel to get them to the opportunity. So breaking down barriers for particular groups of young people. That's how, those, that's how we can get an existing project funded. Right. And back to that point of and the purpose of Tumano is getting inactive kids active or kids that are missing out, young people that are missing out. Totally. So um, are there any things that are ineligible for funding that people should be aware of before they start diving into submitting an application? Yeah, for sure. There's some really, um, really good ones to note that I can explain for sure. Um, so as, as Tumanua is an activation fund, um, we can only fund the costs, the direct costs associated with activating young people. Um, and that unfortunately excludes anything related to capital works. So anything that's sort of an investment or, um, uh, or a high cost, um, a high cost expense that remains, if that makes sense, that is deemed as a capital work. So things like a, a van, um, you cannot purchase a van with two manua funds. Um, you cannot build a playground with two manua funds. So the the capital works um, is something that is that is unfortunately ineligible because um, it's not deemed uh, a, a necessary activation cost, if that makes sense. Um, another one is that's particularly um, worthwhile talking about is we cannot fund a, a role for role's sake. What mm. we can fund is the activities, the specific activities that are targeting inactive young people that someone within a role will deliver. So, for example, there might be a weekly opportunity that is delivered. Um, the person delivering that experience and coordinating that experience might end up doing five hours a week. For that whole year and so therefore you would cost it as five hours a week for those activities as opposed to applying for a role that is employed all year round if that makes sense right for sure yeah. so there's an expectation around the, this play fund and um what was previously the major fund that applicants are going to gather insights and measure the impact of their project can you just talk through why that's important uh, so we, I guess when, you know, like any investment, we need to be able to see that um, the funds being spent are, are making an impact. Um, and there's a there's a really strict criteria in this Tumanua fund that kind of needs to be monitored. So to be able to gather insights and capture the learnings or capture the successes or capture the, um, the impact, the sort of the wider impact of the project beyond just kids turning up. Um, it's really important to show that, um, to be able to demonstrate that with evidence and with insights. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a non-negotiable. We need, we want to be able to, we want to be able to hear back the the, the cool stories and the the impact these projects have in terms of uh, young people's association with physical activity. And ideally, they have a positive one. <laughs> yeah, excellent. And I think that's the key thing here, isn't it? That if we we want to be able to demonstrate that there is impact for young people around the Bay of Plenty. Um, so insights and measurements uh, around that are quite critical. Um, I do know that on our website we have insights and measurements info sheets. So if people aren't familiar with um, with what insights means or how they may capture it or how they may take those measures, there's some really great tip sheets on there. Can you also talk uh, to us about what other resources are available on the Sport Bay Planning website? Yeah, sure thing. So we're um, we're we're going to upload the um, the guidelines and we're going to um, we're going to increase um, the amount of FAQs that are there. So some of the frequently asked questions. Um, we're going to put up some um, templates. So one one in particular is going to be like a, an example budget. So when applying, you, you get a, a, a look into the type of expectations we have around your project budget. And we're also going to have some case studies. So um, sort of model applications, if you like. Um, the last thing we have is, a, is an updated questionnaire around eligibility. So you answer the questions 
depending on your answers, um, you'll get an indication as to whether your project would be eligible or ineligible. Okay, awesome. Now, can people reach out to the team at Sport Bio Plenty if they have any questions? Yeah, sure thing. So I believe at the either at the bottom or the top, I'm not sure where it'll be, but on the web page there will be a contact form. Um, so if you would like to ask specific questions that may not have been answered through the various other resources we have on our website, um, you can fill in that form and our team will get back to you and, and help fill in those gaps. Um, but be aware that as we move into the Christmas break, we do have an office shutdown period. Um, so there may be a sort of a slight, a slightly larger delay than we would like to um, for getting back to people. No worries. Hey, Kelvin, thank you so much for your time. I know that um, there's certainly a lot of questions about this fund being in the first year of it. But yeah, hopefully we've ticked off some of those for potential applicants in the future. So just a reminder, you can access those resources on the website at sportbop.co.nz. Thanks, Kelvin. Cheers, Denise. Have a good one.